It's my great privilege uh, today as we join each other by this means to, to read you of the testimony of a seeker. Uh, this comes from the writings of a, a Richard Harvey. Richard Harvey was one of the founders of Youth for Christ and he also did some other uh, work uh, serving our Lord. But he was visiting a missionary one day. And the missionary said to Dick Harvey, Harvey, there's, there's a tribesman in this country that you ought to meet. And so Dick Harvey said, well, let's go meet him. Oh, it's not that easy. He lives a full day's journey from here and the roads are rough. And he may not even be alive. He's very aged. And I've heard from him, haven't heard from him in many months. By the way you talk, it makes me want to take a chance. Can we go tomorrow? As we traveled, the missionary told me the man's story. When he was 21, he sent for the village elders and they met in front of his hut. He took his bag of religious paraphernalia and dumped it out on the ground along with many of his many fetishes. I have no confidence in any of these. There's somebody up there pointing to the sky who made the sun, moon, stars, trees, and animals. And he made me, and I want to worship him. No one has told me about him, but I'm sure he's up there. Thus, for ten years, every morning at sunrise, the young man went to the tall grass outside the village, lifted his eyes toward the heaven, and with his arms upraised, cried out, Oh, you up there, whoever you are, I worship you. After ten years of daily praying and seeking, a Muslim teacher heard about him and came to live with him. The teacher told him about Allah and read the Quran to him. Then one day, very abruptly, he turned to the teacher and said, You can leave. This Allah you're telling me about is not the man in the sky I'm praying to. Every day for many more years, this man continued to pray each morning. Oh, you up there, whoever you are, make yourself known to me. I want to worship you. A Catholic priest heard about this man who prayed so faithfully. So he came to live with him and teach him. He told him about the God of the Bible, about God sending his son Jesus Christ, and about Christ's death on the cross, his payment for our sins. A little more than two weeks, the man said to the priest, the story you tell me about the God of the sky and his son Jesus being sent into the world sounds sweet. And I like the words of the book you read to me. Somehow I believe it might be true. But you can go now. I don't like the things you do. Things I would not do if I believed in the man of the book as you say you do. So the priest went away. More than five years later, finally a missionary was told about the man in the distant town. He went to inquire and found him easily because the man was well known. The missionary read from the same book as had the priest. As he did so, the man's face lit up. I've heard that book before. The missionary told him about the story of Christ's death and resurrection. Okay, this man in the skies is alive now. Yes, said the missionary. Went on to explain the ascension and promised return. In the matter of only a few days, the seeker of many years had opened his life to Jesus Christ. When I saw him, he was very old. His hair was as white as snow. The wrinkles in his hand were so deep that one might place his fingers in their furrows. His aged eyes could only extinguish light from darkness. Every morning, his wife placed him outside their mud hut on a mat with only a roof of grass and banana leaves to shelter him from the hot African sun. When he arrived and the missionary spoke his name, his face lit up. The old man recognized the missionary's voice. After they had conversed briefly, he reached out and took a piece of paper from under the thatched roof. It was old and worn. It was a page from the New Testament. He proceeded to quote it and then return it to its place. He then found another sheet of paper and rubbed his hand over it. It was from a songbook. Then he tried to sing the songs in his quavery, cracked voice. Suddenly, before we left, his, his head turned in the direction of the missionary's voice and says, Teacher, would you, would you have that young man come close to me? I felt honored because I was in my 50s and he called me a young man. He reached out to find my body and kept feeling until he found my arm and then my wrist and he pulled me to the ground beside him. Feeling around his, until his hands found the top of my head, he began to pray. I've had many pray for me down through the years, great men of God, but never have I felt God's power so real as when this elderly African saint prayed for me. There seemed to be a current flowing from his body into mine. As Jeremiah says, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I had met an African who had sought against tremendous odds, and he had found. Well, thank you, Lord, for this testimony of this seeker. Thank you for all eternity when we're going to hear many more stories like this. In Jesus' name, amen.